All right, we've all heard that expression that this isn't your father's insert something here. Like it could be a car, anything. Uh, in this case, this is the Harvey Alpha A15 Intelligent Bandsaw. This isn't your father's bandsaw, and it is your grandfather's. Like there's there's a big comparison yes. here. First of all, it talks to you. It's intelligent. That's not normal. Network is off. I got to turn some things on it. The other thing is that this is solid cast iron metal. This thing is steel. It is not going anywhere. This is 700 pounds of pure beast. So this is more like the ones we used to see, the old time machines that people buy to restore. This is it. This is back to it, but it's all upgraded, all new. And I can't wait to show you some of the features of this machine. So let's do some of these basic specs first. It runs on 220 volt and has a three horsepower motor. It's got 15 inch wheels with a 14 and a half inch cutting depth. It uses blades that can go from a quarter inch up to a full one inch and 144 inches long. It comes with a big eye fence, which is really nice because you can do micro adjustments with this. It dials in really nicely and it's got stops on that front fence. You can see them there. It locks really well and it's got a nickel plated table that is guaranteed rust free. Gorgeous, gorgeous piece. So the first cut I did on here was actually a resaw cut using the blade that comes with the machine. They send a really nice blade and I'm using poplar. It's a 12 inch piece of poplar. Uh, you can see I didn't do a great job there at the end. It got a little loose on me, but I want you to see how thin that piece is. It cuts super, super fine. And if you look, I, I just want you to see how well it's tracking, how well that cut is. So one of the things I wanted this for is the resaw ability. So I was really, really impressed with how well it worked and how well it cut that piece. But I want to switch it out and I want to put on a smaller blade to cut something out. So the first thing I got to do is release the tension bar. I'm going to open this back up. The alarm is going to sound. Ah, it, I get it. It does not sound because I released the tension first. So now I need to take this blade off and open up all of these. And there's another one down here that you have to open up all of these to take this off. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I'm gonna put that over there. Now the blade I'm pulling out, I'm gonna save the little uh, tape that comes with it because I'm gonna have to enter new information into the computer. And this is from Timberwolf. One of the cool things here is the dual tension that allows you to put more tension in. Once you release the brake, the wheel can turn. And I love this little viewfinder. Tighten the tension bar back up. Okay, so right now you can see that I am not at enough tension. If I turn it one yes. way, I'm loosening it. All right, so I'm in the tension of what I need. Now, one of the things I need to do is change the blade spec. So this is a quarter inch blade, thickness, oh, so now it's telling me I'm way too tight, I want to get to that green zone. All right, let's talk first about the blade guide. Now I've got a quarter inch blade on here, it's tensioned. What's nice is that this is all toolless and I want you to see how easy this is to move forward and backward. This moves back, the, the main guide wheel moves forward and backward very easily. It's easy to see it and it's easy to adjust it. The bottom guide has a couple things going on that are really good. One is that it also has the same toolless wheel, uh, toolless control. The second thing is that this opens up so you can see in there. If we go to the front of the machine, there's a lot of space to get in here and maneuver and work on things, brushes, this is the dust collection, which does a really nice job because it's angled, but there is a lot of space here to be able to see and adjust with no issues. One of the things they have posted is that there's about four and three quarters inches between the bottom of the table and the base there. So that's a lot more space to get in there, operate, move around and fix things. And here you can see how easy it is to see and adjust these. Another change they have is that those bearings are actually one and a quarter inches, so they're larger for more durability. If we open the top again, you can hear the beeping. That's because there's a sensor to tell you if either door is open and it won't operate if it is. And these are solid cast iron wheels with the blade guard going all the way up through the top of it. Another really neat thing that I like, built-in window allows you to see the position of the blade on the wheel. So that can be adjusted. 
And of course we have the big eye fence. It glides beautifully on their nickel plated top. And speaking of the base, let's talk about how clean and smooth this moves. So apparently they redesigned the whole trunnion system. So not only does it integrate with the screen so you can see what angle you're at, you can also have really smooth operation. And calibrating the table to make sure everything's at 90 degrees is really easy. So let's talk about what makes this intelligent. It has a computerized system. You can set up all the systems on here. You can do blade specs so it tells you so you tell exactly what type of blade you're using and that's important for tensioning so you can set the actual tension so no more need to do a flutter test on there and figure out what's going on you also have the led light that'll come on when you need that you can check the table tilt the speed and you can tension and do a self test one of the things i was waiting to do until i got this machine was to do one of these patterns where uh, you put it on a block of wood and you cut it out. So I got this one from my friend Pierre Luc at Brick Logique. Uh, he's a Canadian guy and he sells these patterns. They are fantastic. One of the nice things about these is it tells you the size of the block of wood you need in order to attach them to. So I just used uh, spray glue, put it on there, let it dry, and then you know tape off the one side after you cut it out. I love these. Now, one of the things about the Harvey Bandsaw is that the larger wheels, the bearings, allow you to make larger or steeper cuts. The blade I have on right now is a quarter inch, but if I put on a scroll saw blade, which is like 3 16th inch, I would be able to do much steeper curves instead of having to uh, dig out those edges of like I'm doing. But no matter what blade I use, it was a lot of fun. This was one of the first times I've done this, at least for real. And I, I think the, the Harvey Bandsaw made a huge difference because it had the power to do what I couldn't do before. So I think it turned out great. And this was the cat it made. All right. So we just went through the setup of the machine, how to use it, all the key features, my first cuts with it. One of the things I forgot to show you was this little clip right here. Um, the start and stop of this machine, it has an automatic brake that engages to stop it quickly. I think it's a really great thing to see and talk about with this, but there's a lot of great features about this. It is not your grandfather's bandsaw, and it is, right? It's got these intelligent features, well-designed stuff, and it is a solid machine. I am beyond impressed with it. Now, if you're running a shop where you use a bandsaw a lot, this is going to be a game changer for you because of the features, because of the strength, the power of the machine. If you're in a garage, eh, you're probably not going to use this. This is going to be overkill for you. And, uh, you know, you need to make sure that you have the right power for it. So pros and cons. I love the machine. I would highly recommend it to anybody who needs one. Um, the second half of the video, I want to show you delivery and setup of it and putting it together. I don't think it's important for everybody. Some of you might enjoy it, especially the part where I run into the issue that I ran into getting it delivered. We'll talk about that. But thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, all those good things. I hope it's helpful for you. Have a great day. All right, I've already told you about the saw. I told you all the great things about it, but now I want to show you about the installation setup and everything, and I want to talk about delivery. So everything was fine. You know, a lot of times you'll see these videos where stuff fell and it all went to heck, but in this case, it was fine up until this one point as we were walking down and I looked around the corner and I thought, man, that's not going to fit in my garage door. And it did not. So I had to do some things. It was not fun. First part was unboxing it in the driveway. It is really well packaged. So I do want to say it is fantastically packaged. Uh, half inch plywood locked together, foam all around that foam piece on the top and the boxes were all inside. All right, let's be honest. This is more in here for comedic effect because this was three hours worth of work. It was the hardest thing I've done in a while. And my phone cut out actually as I started getting it in and it tipped over into the side of the garage, but I was able to save everything. So here it is on the spider mobile base, which is remarkably mobile. And here are the four boxes that actually come with the machine. Uh, the first one of these is the Big Eye Fence, which not only is it really well packaged, I am blown away by the construction of this. I love the way it goes together, and I think it's just really smart. This is all the fence and the rail components, the front and back. I'll show you how those go together. But I, I think it's really also impressive. I like the design. And then this last box here is going to be the uh, computer screen. All right, let's go put this thing together. Now, obviously, the first step is to take the plastic off and to take the coating off the nickel-plated table, which came out really beautifully. Uh, and then I'm going to put the rails on the front and the back. So it's really neat how they did this. The They have these offset uh, bolts that have to be set up correctly, and they've got really big spacers there to hold it in place. So you set it up, and then it has to be spaced and, and measured correctly. 
So once you get that, you bolt it into place and it works really well. Uh, with the big eye fence, you can put on a metric or an imperial guide there. So I just did the uh, imperial one. The back is a little bit weird because the middle of the bolts, you can't actually get to the, the tight in the middle one. You can only do the two on the sides. But I mean, you could if you un attached the cord, but I didn't want to do that. So I just left it. I don't think it matters that much. Screw on the one of the two. So that's really cool too, is it has two different uh, emergency stops. So it's nice to have two different ones in different places, just in case you need it. Like I said before, the big eye fence slides on beautifully. I really dig the way they do the fence on here because it slides in perfectly. The computer screen, super easy, bolted in place. It's got two of these airplane cables that you just plug in and it's plug and play. You're ready to go. Now, earlier I showed you my installation for how I put on the quarter inch blade. I, this is the first time I'm putting on the blade. This is the resaw blade that actually comes with the machine. So you can see it's really well wrapped. Uh, you take it apart, put it on there. Everything is exactly like we talked about before. The hard part here, obviously, like with any bandsaw, is fitting it in place. I keep forgetting this little uh, unscrewing part here. I, like an idiot, I keep forgetting about that. But you just put it in through the side one of the nice things is the, um, the blade guard there, really well designed, really tall and long. So you're not going to have any uh, anything dangerous with that. So once you put it in place, obviously we talked about this, you're going to tighten up that, that wheel. And that's the tension bar in the top to make sure you get the correct tension. I forgot to release the blade brake there, so I could not see it didn't turn as well. But there's that window again, so you can see where the blade is in terms of everything else. Again, lock everything, close it up, and you are good to go. Are you, now you can start it up. Once it turns on, it makes a noise. It says hello to you, and then it tells you about the machine. And there's all sorts of different things that you can do with it. One of those is hook up to the Wi-Fi, set everything up. Uh, I'm not going to show you hook into the Wi-Fi because I'm not giving anybody my password. But you have all sorts of options. You can set up different types of bits of information on there, whatever you want. It's really neat to have this. I personally, I like the bleed tension the best. Uh, it allows me to see where I am. The table tilt is nice too, and it is accurate. The table closes up and down, goes to a perfect 90 degrees. So I, I'm really digging having that. Uh, and the on-off switch, obviously, having that right there is very helpful. So here's the actual first resaw cut I did. I did this on a walnut. This is three-quarter inch thick walnut. Uh, it was about five and a half inches wide. So, uh, you know, I, it's not really as impressive as the other one. But either way, it cut really, really well. This, like I said, my actual first cut on here. So uh, it was some figuring out. One of the neat things about the big eye fence is that you can actually adjust how tight it is and how strong the... Uh, clamping force is once you put it on the table. So I highly recommend checking that out. I want to try it for my table saw. Uh, that's going to be one of the things I do next. I really, really want to get one for my table saw, but it came out perfectly. That was the walnut. And then this is a seven and a half inch piece of um, maple. So again, really clean cut, tracked well. I was very, very impressed with the resaw capacity. One of the things I make a lot are these things called Jefferson book stands, and I make them out of walnut. And this will be a lot easier for me to get thicker panels than it would have been in the other any other way.